Thank you, Mr. President. The Senator from West Virginia. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to be on the floor today with the chair of our EPW committee and with my uh, friend from Arkansas, Senator Bozeman. Uh, I'm going to speak again uh, about another example of the bipartisan work of our EPW committee, uh, where we've had uh, accomplishments of real, practical, and positive uh, results that result in good change for our country. At EPW, we have a history of working together, uh, crafting legislation together, and getting good policy going. And sometimes it's not easy, but we've been able to do it. The cornerstones of the in uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act which made needed investments in our nation's core, uh, core infrastructure was written and passed out of EPW. The Water Resources Development Act, same thing, which was supported by the U.S., supports the work of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers on projects across this country, was passed out of our EPW committee unanimously and eventually became law. And today, Chairman Carper, Senator Bozeman, and I are reintroducing two pieces of legislation previously approved by EPW and the Senate, the Senate unanimously, both the committee and the, and the full Senate, to tackle another issue in a bipartisan way, and that's access to recycling in America. Not only is recycling something that we found people really want to do, it's great for the environment and it's good for business. It supports over one million jobs and generates billions of dollars in economic output every year. But in order to grow these numbers, we need to ensure people who want to participate really can, particularly those in rural and underserved areas, such as uh, areas of my state, so that they can do so. The first bill we're reintroducing today, the Recycling Infrastructure and Accessibility Act, addresses these challenges, which states like West Virginia face when it comes to recycling. For many of our smaller cities and towns, and the one I live in, we've sort of stopped and started on recycling. Recycling services, including curbside recycling, are just simply not available. So these rural areas share common barriers to accessibility, location and proximity to materials recovery facilities, and the size and density of the population. This is just not available. This has led to low processing yields and high costs and collection and transportation costs, making it difficult for material recovery facilities to operate at a profit. Our legislation would establish a pilot recycling program to ensure places like West Virginia, Arkansas, Wyoming, Alaska, to make sure that we aren't being left behind. The pilot program would award grants on a competitive basis to eligible entities for improving recycling accessibility in a community or communities within the same geographic area. Along with improving access to recycling, it's important to fix important data gaps, as the chairman spoke about, when it comes to recycling in America. That's the intent of the Recycling and Composting Accountability Act, the other piece of legislation we're introducing today. It would improve data collection on our nation's recycling systems and explore the potential of a national composting strategy. Not only would this give us a better idea of how well states are doing through cycling and composting rates, but it would also help us identify those areas that may be struggling to sustain and grow proper recycling programs. These are simple steps we can take, supported by both Republicans and Democrats, to improve and expand recycling in this country. Americans in every community, rural and urban, on the coasts or in the heartland, share a desire to protect our environment. These pieces of legislation will help make it easier for them to recycle, to contribute to a healthier planet, and to create jobs along the way. With Earth Day coming up, it's fitting we continue our efforts to expand recycling by reintroducing these bills today alongside Chairman Carper and Senator Bozeman, and I thank them both for their work.